Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 50. Hello, Flanagans. How can I help you? Oh, uh, yes. Hello. I'd like to book a table for tomorrow night for six people, please. Yes, madam. And what sort of time? About eight. Let me see. Uh, yes, that's fine. And what's the name, please? It's Branson. That's fine, Miss Branson. So, a table for six at eight o'clock. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good evening. Uh, do you have a reservation? Oh, hello, yes. It should be under the name of Branson. Uh, yes, here we are. A table for six. Your table will be just a couple of minutes. Uh, would you like to have a drink at the bar first? And I can bring you some menus as well. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Sounds mm. good. Why not? Well, it all looks very good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So, are you ready to order? Yes. Is there anything you recommend? Well, the fish is very good today. Well, as a starter, I'd like the soup. And then to follow, I'll have the salmon with dill butter. Thank you very much. That was very good. And uh, would you like to see the dessert menu? Uh, no, I don't think so. Just some coffee, I think. And the bill, please. Yes, certainly. Very good, sir. Well, that was really good. I'll leave a good tip. Yes, we should. It's excellent here. We must come again. Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 51. Can you tell us about your company? My company is the Cavendish Consultancy. It is a corporate entertainment and corporate event company based in West London. It operates in all sports, show business and performing arts, mainly in the United Kingdom, but we also tender for overseas events, which gives us the opportunity to spread our knowledge and skills and expertise around the world. What are the most popular events for corporate entertaining? The most popular events remain the major sports, and the major events in those sports. Within sports it does vary. For example, those sports where the rules are fairly simple and straightforward are more popular. Thus, cricket, which is a personal um, like of mine, is not actually one of the most popular because the rules are fairly complicated. Horse racing is very successful. Football, soccer, as it's called in many countries around the world, but football in England <laughs> is very popular. Um, motor racing works well. And then moving on to the entertainment side, the theatre, pop concerts, musicals particularly. Um, for a number of years, Phantom of the Opera, has been very popular in New York and in London and in many other cities around the world where it has showed. Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 52. Is corporate entertainment changing as the economy changes? Cavendish has been in business 30 years, so we've seen two, if not three, recessions. In fact, were founded in 1981, which was a recession in the UK, and it does change, and it's also changed enormously over those 30 years. The quality of the product that we develop, deliver now is vastly superior, much, much better than the product we delivered in 1981. The, the recent downturn, and particularly because the downturn has affected the financial sector, and the financial sector was a very big entertainer, has changed quite significantly. Not so much the product, but people have reduced budgets, and when they reduce budgets, 
they have, perhaps surprisingly, not gone for a cheaper product, but just taken fewer people to the expensive product. So the top of the range hospitality is holding up better than the less expensive alternatives. Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 53. What do you think makes a corporate event successful? First, you have to identify your aim, your purpose in entertaining people at this particular event. That's absolutely key. If you don't know why you're doing it, probably don't do it. Um, then, having identified why you're doing it, it's all the planning and all the little things. You can have the very best sporting event, the very best pop concert, but if the little things go wrong, that's what people remember. So it's contingency planning, it's having backups. And if it rains, have some umbrellas there. The catering is absolutely vital. People now expect a very high standard of food and drink. And then bear in mind that it is the staff on the day who will meet all the guests. It's not the overall event organiser. I can't meet every guest of every, at every Cavendish event. It's the quality and the training and the briefing of the staff that you employ on the day is absolutely key. And the last thing I would say is always follow up afterwards. And I think that gives the opportunity to cement the relationship. Did you enjoy the day? And what else would you like to go to? And those sorts of things. Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 54. The most extravagant event I've ever heard of was in July 1998 when the British Grand Prix, the motor race at Silverstone, was on the same day as the FIFA Soccer World Cup final in Paris. And it was then possible to get a helicopter from central London to Silverstone. Now Silverstone is about 60 miles, 100 kilometers northwest of London. So you helicoptered to the ground, you watched Michael Schumacher win the race, you helicoptered back to London Heathrow, the big airport just to the west of London, and then you flew in an aeroplane that was then the best aeroplane in the world, Concorde, to Paris. It didn't go supersonic, um, that is above the speed of sound, um, but you did go to Paris in Concorde and flew back that night, so in less than 24 hours you had seen a Formula One motor race and the World Cup final. Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 55. Conversation 1. Hello, I'm Liz. Oh, hello again, Liz. How are you? It's Jane. We met in Paris last year. Oh, yes! I didn't recognize you. Your hair is a bit different. I'm fine. And what about you? I'm very well, thanks. And how's business? It's going really well, especially in Italy. Great! Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 56. Conversation 2. Ah, oh, James, have you met Sam Clark? No. Hello, Sam. Good to meet you. I think we both know Mike Upton. We work together in Turkey. Oh, yes, uh, Mike. He's in China now. Really? I didn't know that. Give him my regards next time you see him. Yes, I will. Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 57. Conversation 3. Julia, do you know Jürgen? Yes, of course. Hello, Jürgen. Good to see you again. How are things? Fine, thanks, Julia. 
It's great to see you again. Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 58. Conversation 4. Hi, I'm John. Hello, John. Pleased to meet you. I'm Lisa from the Amsterdam office. Oh, Amsterdam. I've never been, but I hear it's a great city. Very lively. Yes, it is. It's great. You should come. The conference is going to be there next year. Oh, I'd love to. I'll look forward to it. Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 59. Conversation 5. Carla, I'd like you to meet one of our best customers, Linda Eriksson from SRT in Sweden. Hello, Linda. Great to meet you at last. I've heard a lot about you. Not all bad, I hope. Not at all. It's great to be able to put a face to a name. Absolutely. Unit 6. Entertaining. Track 60. It's not going to be easy to please everyone, Kate. What are the most important things, do you think? Actually, I've made a list of things we'll need. Shall I go through it with you? Yeah, go ahead. Right. Well, we're looking for a hotel that's good value for money. It's a priority for us because we've got to keep costs down. The conference centre must have a really big room for, say, a hundred people because there will be some presentations that everyone must attend. And we'll need at least four meeting rooms. We're going to have quite a few workshops and training sessions, as we usually do. Yes, and the meeting rooms will need to be quite big, Kate with enough room for, say, 25 participants, even more if it's a popular session. Yeah, good point. We have to think carefully about the location for the conference. If possible, it shouldn't be too far away from an airport. Most people will be arriving by air. We don't want them to have problems finding the hotel, like they did last year. A shuttle service from the airport to the hotel would be a plus, don't you think? Yeah. But not all hotels offer that facility. True. One other thing, it's important that the centre has good leisure facilities. We want staff to enjoy themselves as well as take part in work sessions. Don't forget, they're free on Friday and they could also have some free time early on Monday as well. Right. We certainly don't want them to go away complaining they didn't enjoy themselves or have enough time to buy presents for friends and relatives. Yeah, there'll be a gala dinner on the Sunday evening. They should enjoy that. It'll be an opportunity for everyone to relax, do some networking and meet colleagues from all over the world. Working Across Cultures 2, Track 61 I am pleased you like our food, Mr. Morgan. My son Ahmed will now bring us some cakes and pastries. Which would you like to try? I'm sorry, I just can't eat anything more. Oh, surely you could try just one? No, really, that's enough for me. I'm just not used to eating such big meals. Uh, actually, I'm on a diet at the moment. Oh, I see. What a pity. You know, we are famous for our pastries. Really? I didn't know that. Well, as you know, my company has stores in all the major cities here. I'm sure you've heard about our business. Most of the stores sell household goods, and they're located in busy main streets. Ah, actually, I didn't know that. My colleague Hussein gave me your number and told me to contact you. I was very busy just before I left England, so I didn't have much time to prepare for this visit. I see, I see. Yes, Hussein emailed me to say you would be visiting us, so I expected to hear from you. Tell me, what's your main purpose in coming here? Well, we want to sell our products in Morocco. We're not doing that at the moment. And we plan to start by distributing our goods through large department stores. Eventually, I suppose, we'll set up a sales facility here. We've used this approach in other new markets, and it's worked well for us. It's a good formula. I see. I'm not sure if that approach will work well here in Morocco, using department stores. Oh. But I could give you some contacts if you like. 
people I know who have shops here, ones that sell a lot of household products. Thanks very much, but perhaps next time. I'm going to see the British consulate tomorrow. They're going to give me some names of people to visit. I have to leave next Wednesday, so I don't have much time. I want to arrange as many visits as possible. It would be nice to take home some informal agreements with one or two companies, then later sign the written contracts. We want to have distribution agreements with some local business people by the end of the year. The end of the year? In only three months? Look, maybe I can help you. Why don't you leave me some of your business cards? If I meet someone who could help you, I'll give them your card and ask them to get in touch. Yes, good idea. It could be very useful. Uh, here are some of my cards. Thanks very much. Mmm, they are very well designed. Everything is in English, I see. Yes, most business people speak English these days, don't they? Well, thanks very much, Mr. Mansur. I've had a very enjoyable meeting. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Morgan. Can I give you a word of advice? Mm -hmm. Try to learn as much as you can about the business culture here before your next visit. The more you know, the easier it is to do business here. Have a safe journey home. Working Across Cultures 2 Track 62 Extract 1 I made a big mistake when I negotiated with a Korean team. There were four people in their team, and I talked mostly to a younger man who spoke excellent English. I thought he was the team leader. I didn't say much to the oldest man in the group. He sat silently for some time because his English wasn't very good. But later in the meeting, the old man took control of the discussion with the help of an interpreter. He was the chief executive of the company and made all the big decisions. I learned a lot about Korean business culture from that meeting. Working Across Cultures 2 Track 63 Extract 2 As soon as I got to Korea, everyone said to me, print plenty of business cards and make sure they're translated into Korean. They were right. Koreans want to know who they're dealing with and what your title is. Status is very important and a business card tells them if you're of equal status to them. When you present your card, you should hold it in both hands, and when you receive a business card, accept it with both hands and read it carefully. It shows respect. Working Across Cultures 2 Track 64 Extract 3 I was assistant to the marketing director. I had some ideas for improving the layout of our stores in Seoul, so I wrote my ideas on a sheet of paper and sent it to all of the staff in the department. Everyone commented on my ideas and approved them. I then talked to the marketing director, and he announced that there would be a project to change the layout of the stores. You see, decisions come from the top in Korean companies, but everyone needs to have their say. They call it consensus, everyone agreeing to a proposal. Working Across Cultures 2, Track 65, Extract 4 I learned one thing pretty quickly about Korean business culture. There's often a lot of red tape. You'll need a lot of official documents before you can go ahead with a project. You may spend months trying to get permissions from ministries and government officials. But a bit of networking often helps. The right contacts are so important in that culture. You need to be patient. Leave a